Well, looking at uh, trade finance in Africa, we have an African growth story. Political risk in Kenya could result in a sharp fall in new investments this year, which halved uh, last year. Joining me now for an in-depth look at how this affects the region's trade and investments is firstly Elizabeth Stevens, who's Head of Credit and Political Risk Analysis at JLT Specialty, and George Bodo, who's Head of Financials Desk at uh, EcoBank Research. Let's start with you, Elizabeth, in London. Good morning to you. Uh, th there's a lot of talk uh, and has been for some time about uh, the great African growth story, the opportunities for companies, for investment, uh, and uh, investment in things like infrastructure, a great uh, story unfolding, a great narrative. Financing is often an issue, so what's your perspective? Sum up the, the perspective, big picture there, from the point of view of credit and uh, political risk. Uh, financing is needed in abundance for many projects across Africa and that's virtually every country in Africa. Uh, financing is available from a number of sources now, uh, both from uh, Western Europe, the US and further afield China, India and Brazil. So the possible investment partners now for African countries is huge. We are seeing changes to the patterns of investment into the continent. We've seen a slight contraction from European investment as a result of the Eurozone financial crisis which is still continuing and that's likely to continue into the future now as banking regulation is tightened and we see the impact of BAL3 which will uh, increase capital um, adequacy requirements for those banks looking to uh, trade and finance investment uh, in the continent. Well let's bring in George there and perhaps George look at it uh, specifically from a Kenyan point of view. There was a considerable perceived political risk with the election earlier the, in the year, given what had happened with the previous election. That seems to have dissipated. How, how, how is the temperature in terms of political risk in relation to financing and getting investment? Um, uh, the, there's a, the, the, the political risk have generally subsided, um, especially in, in Kenya. And, and also, if you look at the greater EAC region, um, the political risk have, have really have taken a backwater. And so what we've seen is, uh, um, uh, you know, an increased uh, focus, especially on the deals in this region, uh, and more specifically on the trade finance deals. Uh, and, and you're looking at areas like, um, uh, you know, um, uh, exploration, oil, uh, oil exploration. I mean, you know, Kenya has just discovered a huge deposit of oil in the northern part of the country. So we've seen a lot of attention coming in this region. And just to give you more, uh, more clear examples, if uh, Niger for instance, Nigerian, Nigeria's, uh, one of Nigeria's largest bank by market capitalization, GT Bank, just acquired a stake. Uh, a 70 percent stake in one of the local banks that has a regional process so it just it just shows you that you know there's a there's an increased focus on, on the EAC region as a whole uh, and this is primarily f uh, boosted by the fact that political risk have taken a backwater mm. Elizabeth uh, t you mentioned earlier increased uh, regulation better regulation of the banking sector reduction of risk there does that kind of regulatory environment improvement uh, and there's a lot of uh, good example from around the world to draw on for Africa. Does that kind of uh, regulatory improvement actually mitigate the political risk or does it sit separately and it, does it have to be assessed separately in places like uh, Kenya where we said the, risk, the political risk, uh, as George has said, has gone to a backwater and a place like Zimbabwe, for example? I think it's very different in different territories. I might take a slightly different view to George in terms of the Kenya story. I think investors, Kenyans, the whole of Africa breathed a palpable sigh of relief when the election earlier this year passed off peacefully. But that doesn't mean that for foreign investors political risk has been substantially reduced within the territory. We saw uh, two weeks ago now that the Kenyan government announced that it would be reviewing all mining contracts that had been uh, signed in the first five years of this, uh, sorry, first five months of this year with foreign investors and a number of those contracts will be revoked and we're seeing changes to the tax and royalty system within Kenya for mining projects and we're likely to see the same for oil and gas projects. So if you're a foreign investor into that territory, political risk is still a factor. It's just taking a slightly different form to 24, 36 months ago when the focus was on the risk of political violence. With somewhere like Zimbabwe, there's obviously no rule of law at the moment. There's no independent judiciary, so trying to invest in that territory creates very different um, issues. There's obviously some sanctions on the territory as well, so that's very challenging for Western investors, which has given uh, China huge advantages there. 
Uh, George, from what Elizabeth is saying, there's a, a two kinds of political risk, if you like. The one kind is of instability, uh, of judicial uh, lack of independence, those kinds of things in the civil society area. The other kind of interference uh, is interference in contracts, royalties, politically motivated or from the political executive, but nonetheless uh, affecting what happens in business. I, I beg to ad agree, disagree on that point, uh, on the fact that, you know, what happened in Kenya two weeks ago, uh, large to a large extent, was not uh, entirely politically driven. Uh, what, what, what the government is trying to do is trying to clean up the, the sector, you know, um, there's been a lot of, um, you know, you're trying to, to bring some sanity in the sector. There's, uh, what the government is trying to say here is that we don't know what's going on here. Can we have, uh, you know, can we have an, a database? Can we track this, what, what you're doing in this country? I think from a, from a regulatory perspective, it is, it, is, it is quite in order and it should not scare investors away from this country. And I, I'll give you an example, even in Nigeria today, uh, it's not the Central Bank of Nigeria has just starting to implement saliently, albeit, a non-externalization externalization of USD rule whereby what we're seeing right now is Nigerian banks are now not allowed to a certain extent to fund any, any, any to finance any, 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 any USD transaction outside Nigeria. So you can't say that's political. You know what the government is trying to do is to try to bring sanity in the, in, 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 in the sector. So on that basis I think uh, I would disagree uh, on, on that point. Elizabeth, perhaps to just sum up the picture of investor perception, uh, investors use ratings agencies, I suppose they use companies like yours when looking for advice. Where would you put the appetite at the moment and how much potential appetite uh, can still be expressed if some of these issues that you've raised have been sorted out? Uh, in other words, how far have we got to go? There is huge appetite for investment across the um, continent. There's vast opportunities and we are seeing considerable funds, funds flowing into the market. Um, in certain territories, they're more challenging than others. We, we do see coups, particularly in East Africa. We've seen that uh, recently. We've had terrorism issues in Mali spilling across, same in Nigeria. But there's greater comfort, I think, with um, investors in certain territories. My company, JLT, and the insurance market as a whole uh, wholeheartedly endorse uh, trade and investment into Africa. As a company, we have policies for virtually every African territory, with the uh, exception of Somalia, and we see an increasing demand for the use of our product, which obviously minimizes the impact of credit and political risk for our clients. Uh, given the downturn in other parts of the world, there's obviously greater focus on African markets, and with the wealth of commodities in the country, I can only see that increasing. Thanks to Elizabeth Stevens, she is Head of Credit and Political Risk Analysis at JLT Specialty and George Bodo, Head of Financials Desk at EcoBank Research, talking to us from London and Nairobi.